Today I would like to talk about um, secrets of six-figure business. Um, for those of you who are really on the journey to develop your business um, towards six figures and even beyond that six figures, you know that sometimes when you are pushing only with the power of your muscles and power of your mind, it is becoming quite difficult. So the more I am doing this, I realize that it is a truth to the saying that we are actually spiritual being in the human body. And the more I'm going and opening to the spiritual practices, the easier actually uh, my business is becoming spiritual meaning energetic and one of the uh, one of the tools that i am using that is bringing me a lot of value but also uh, it brought me a lot of issues and a lot of problems on my way on um, on this spiritual journey is meditation so i would like today on this beautiful morning uh, to share with you a, a bit of my journey and a bit of tips how you can approach the meditation because this is really the food for your soul this is meditation is really the bridge between our 3d reality the reality that we feel that we see that we smell that we touch and the other, the quantum reality that we can actually only feel, um, but this is where the magic happens. This is where our, our higher self lives. And this is where we can connect with our um, highest potential, where we can connect with our guides, if you believe in guides, or with the energy, universal energy or Gaia, um, Gaia energy that supports us on our entrepreneurial journey. So today I would like to, um, to talk about some very practical tips um, which will help you to maybe to look at the meditation a little bit differently. Because if you are like me, um, a very mental, very even scientifically driven person uh, and high achiever, then, you know, spiritual practices are really, I would say, out of this world. A little bit woo-woo, maybe. Um, many of my clients, when they are coming to me, um, they don't believe that uh, this kind of practice can change the, uh, the world. However, when we start to do simple breathing techniques and we start to, I start to introduce them to um, different kinds of meditation because it's not one type, um, then they see um, a lot of benefits in the way they are feeling, in the way they are seeing the world around them and in the way they can approach their business uh, with ease and with um, this touch of freedom and the touch of serenity that they are dreaming about. So uh, let me first um, touch on um, maybe the, the type of the meditation because um, when I was stepping on this um, road, um, my mentor uh, was suggesting a guided meditation and she had a recorded, pre-recorded um, audio file that we were supposed to listen every day for 15, 20 minutes. Actually, the audio was about 20 minutes. Uh, and she was our guide through to this meditation. And um, I started to listen it while sitting uh, and I couldn't, couldn't really um, relax. Because the thing is that meditation, being this bridge between your current world and your spiritual uh, inner being is supposed to um, quiet your mind, is supposed to lead you to the place of non-thought. 
and that's super super difficult when you are um as as me you know a high achiever and me very mental driven person so you need to know how how things are being done then um you are thinking all the time and um we are on average we are experiencing about uh, 80,000 thoughts a day and mental driven uh, people even more so the voices in your head are active all the time meditation is a tool that is supposed to um, not even lower the amount of this uh, you know voices and thoughts but really to quiet um, quiet them down we want scientifically we want to achieve the uh, I think alpha state, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, basically, we would like, um, the objective is to uh, lower the state of our brain waves. So they are not, you know, going like this, but this, um, um, this motion of uh, brain waves is much slower. So in essence, you are calming down. Um, you really feel the connection uh, with um, with your inner being who is uh, i would say not very talkative and not very loud i mean it could be talkative but it's not very loud your inner being your higher self is really the inner whisperer so the communication is very very subtle that's why you need to quiet your mind um, to be able to tune in and listen what is the wisdom inside you and you know the the higher self is nobody else i mean it is you it is this ancient side of you the that really knows knows everything <laughs> i would like to say knows all the scenarios all the possibilities and the outcome of uh, the scenarios and possibilities so she could be an amazing guide for you if you only would like to listen she is actually your highest potential if you listen to people who are speaking about highest potential so to to be able to speak to this goddess or warrior inside of you uh, who is there really to support you and to help you make the bravest decision, even if you are scared and even if you don't really believe that you can do it. She is the power that uh, is really pushing you for unbelievable things. So um, I'd like to... Ah, I started to, to speak about this, um, this guided meditation and um, I couldn't really quiet my mind. What I realized is that, yes, I am receiving the guidance, I am receiving the downloads, but still my to-do list is very, very long. Um, and only, I would say, six months later, I learned that actually what I receive this is still the message from my lower self, from my ego. So from the mechanism that is trying to keep me um, settled in the same place where I am. Because it is not in her intention to, uh, to move forward. She wants status quo. So one of the biggest, biggest, you know, light bulbs for me was that actually to be able to reach for your higher potential, uh, to be able to connect with who you truly are, you need to increase your vibration, but increasing the vibration is possible only when you quiet your mind. So again, I was back to the square one and trying to figure out being this, you know, a high achiever and a mental driven person, how can I actually quiet my mind? So I was uh, looking for different kind of meditation uh, and I thought, okay, so if this guided meditation doesn't work, let's try another guided meditation and another one and another one. And um, 
I would say, I wouldn't like to say that nothing was working, but it was a struggle. Um, I am also quite auditory person. So every sound is like a double or a triple for, um, for a normal, let's say, uh, person. I'm very sensitive to sounds. So I realized that for me, it is very important that I am sitting in a quiet location, actually soundless location. Um, there could be some natural sounds like birds outside or the rain. The rain is actually amazing. And um, I remembered that uh, actually Esther Hicks, she was speaking about um, sound of um, air conditioning or refrigerator, which are like no different. They are there, they are not interesting. Uh, so it's difficult for your mind to hook on that and wander with this. Um, for me, the rain has uh, such, a, such a meaning and such a power. And I checked simply uh, on Spotify because <laughs> we have a rainy summer um, these days, but uh, not every day it is raining and uh, we are supposed to meditate uh, every day. So, uh, so basically I found on Spotify the, um, um, the recording on rains. There are some stormy rains. I select the like a completely quiet summer rain. So basically there are water drops on the leaves. So that's my sound. Um, and that's, that gave me already, you know, the quite nice uh, handicap uh, over there. Um, another struggle was really where should I do it? Uh, where in terms of location, I knew that it is supposed to be very quiet, but I was trying outside, inside, um, in the bedroom, in the um, uh, bathroom, in the kitchen. Uh, I was trying different positions, uh, lying down, standing, sitting in the lotus, sitting on the, uh, on the chair. And my recommendation would be try also different things because you will find the position which is allowing you to come down, which is allowing you to really ease this uh, monkey chatter. So you will, you will see that in some places, some positions, it will be like not even possible or very, very difficult to reach this like no thought uh, place. Uh, and it is a different combination of uh, elements uh, for each and every one of, uh, of us. So basically try something which is working for you and don't be like over complicated about that, okay? Uh, don't be frustrated. If, if one setup doesn't work, try another one and try it several times, uh, you will find your spot. Um, the position, um, only I would say that there is only one thing which is important for the position uh, is um, so that you are making sure that whether you are standing or whether you are sitting, your backbone is straight and uh, all your chakras are in one line. If you are familiar to chakras, you know what I'm talking about. If not, then make sure that top of your head is in the same, um, like a straight line, a uh, vertical line uh, to your backbone, to the place where you are sitting. There is the root chakra, uh, over there. This is basically uh, our backbone is creating the electrical cord. So all the electricity um, is coming um, through our chakras and through our backbone. Um, what else? When you are starting, sit in a straight up position and put your hands with your palms up. Um, ideally, if you are sitting, uh, then put your hands on your laps because it will be simply easier. So um, 
they it is important because you will uh, receive the energy on your uh, on your hands and through the head into your body uh, I know it sounds a little bit uh, woo woo and a little bit magical, but you will experience, make, make a, you know, scientific experiment and sit like that, um, quiet your mind, close your eyes, uh, sit like that for a few minutes and you will experience that your, uh, your hands start to become a little bit warm. You will see that uh, the temperature is changing. It means that the energy is flowing into you. Uh, so apart from, from the location, position, posture, um, I think uh, this is it. Time of a day is important. Um, as for time of a day, I was trying, I was trying different things again. Um, and to tell you the truth, I'm not very morning person. What I've heard from the gurus out uh, out there is, you know, uh, wake up at 5 a.m. in the morning and do your um, your meditation. Uh, 5 a.m. is not really for me. Um, so I was trying um, to meditate as close as possible to the time when I start my work because I am understanding this practice as a support in my work, in my being. But as usual, life is bringing uh, solutions. Um, so at the moment when I was really struggling, uh, like at the end of uh, last year, and uh, was trying to waking up a little bit, um, earlier um, finding my spot that was exactly the moment when my cat was uh, one of my cats uh, was diagnosed with diabetes and uh, he is he was supposed to get his uh, medication very early in the morning um, so i had to wake up uh, really at um, like 6 6 30 which is not my normal time uh, to give him uh, his insulin shot. Uh, and since it was happening uh, in winter and the cat was getting um, used to the shot and really feeling better after the shot, so he was asking for his shot. So the sequence um, of um, events uh, started to happen that my cat started to wake me up for his shot and everything was great until it was winter um, and it was dark uh, until seven but then you know in february uh, the day or the sun starts to um getting up earlier and earlier every day so very quickly we end up with my cat <laughs> to wake up at five and that was uh, I felt like a you know a mother of a newborn who needs to wake up uh, quite early. Uh, I wasn't happy with this, uh, so I trained my cat to uh, to get up at six, and actually six six thirty became my new wake up hour. And since everyone else is asleep at that time, I started to meditate right after giving shots and food uh, to the cat. And I, sorry, and I realized that actually this is something that became my time of a day, uh, that I became to, to await that moment, uh, to be excited about this moment to come. Um, and naturally, uh, I also changed the location from the bedroom into the um, our uh, dining room. Uh, we have a dining room in the in the glass house in the orangery. So this is a beautiful, full of light space 
where I can see sometimes um, the sun rising, the birds singing, sometimes the squirrels are coming. So it's a really happy, uh, very trunk tranquil place. This is this became my uh, spot for the meditation, uh, and I really love it. And I realized that a simple sitting on the chair um, makes it uh, very easy for me. So right now. Um, I mean, these days I am just sitting in my dining, dining room in front of the table on a regular chair, not in the lotus position, just, you know, with my backbone straight and my hands uh, on the laps. Um, and that's it. And I don't need to do anything else. The, the difficult part, uh, the part which is sometimes challenging for me, is uh, really to the moment right after I close my eyes. Uh, because when, I, um, when I'm sitting and I close my eyes, still the, the mind sometimes is quite active, even at this uh, time of a day. So I need to take a couple of deep breaths uh, to, quiet, to quiet this mind. Um, imagining that actually every breath I take is getting me the new energy, completely fresh, untouched energy. And this is what we are doing, breathing, right? We are, every time we are breathing in, we are taking the fresh portion of air and uh, we are breathing out actually uh, something which is not breathable. Um, so I imagine that what I breathe out is a kind of a gray energy, uh, something, everything that I don't need at this moment. So with a couple of deep, really deep breaths, um, I sort of infuse my lungs and my body like completely with this fresh energy. And it is usually enough to... Um, to quiet my mind and uh, start uh, like a real meditation. And then the beauty starts because either my guides, my higher self connects with me immediately uh, and she whispers to my ears ideas. Uh, sometimes uh, there are four posts that I am posting. So on practical level, I always have a um, notebook and a pen next to me. Um, there are some days when there is nothing, but only the feeling of love, gratitude, warmth. So I feel highly protected. I feel that I'm not alone which is super important on the six-figure and beyond six-figure journey. When you are a solo entrepreneur, you are doing most of the things uh, by yourself. So this feeling of being like completely lonely or isolated um, sometimes could be um, quite, quite strong. Uh, so for me, this is the moment where I load my batteries. But there are days where it is even in this tranquil of my orangery, <laughs> it is still difficult. Um, so I incorporated another layer um, which helps me to induce or to infuse this feeling of um, being protected, this feeling that everything will be all right, and that I am capable of doing amazing things. And um, on those days where it is difficult even to meditate, and uh, when it is, you feel like you're trying, trying, but nothing works, it still means that you are in your ego, um, ego energy. Uh, which is a good thing and we should be grateful for that because every time the ego is fighting, it means 
that actually you are on the good track. The harder the ego is for you, the, it means that the ideas, the desires are actually beautiful and stronger and you can do it. You will do it. So at this moment, what I do, uh, I uh, use a prayer, which is called Metta Bhavana prayer. Um, and I'm going to read this prayer uh, to you. It is a prayer that works in three layers. And you don't have to be religious. Believe me, I'm not religious at all. Um, and yet, it is kind like a, kind of a like a guided meditation. I know that the end result of, of this experience is a very soothing and very calming energy that sort of you know covers me like a veil and gives me this boost of energy for my full day. So it is a very short prayer that um, I think uh, it will take you maybe 10 minutes um to to cover that um you just need to before uh, you start praying you, you need to bring into into your attention um apart from yourself um the person who you would like to give this prayer to and the collective that you would like to give this prayer to it could be um, your family, it could be the greater community, uh, it could be the global humanity, it is really up to you. Whatever is resonating, whatever is acting, uh, active, sorry, uh, in your life uh, right now. Uh, so for instance, um, Yesterday, I think I had a quite difficult time because, um, as some of you may know, my husband is injured and he is um, he's not walking at the moment uh, and he probably will be in bed for another one week, maybe two weeks. He's walking only uh, using uh, crutches and only to the bathroom. That's his uh, walking distance at the moment. Uh, but other than that, he is, uh, you know, smiling, he's fine, uh, he is recovering. So I was uh, directing this Metta Bhavana prayer to him too and to all our family uh, at this particular moment. Um, on the practical level, it is said that you are supposed to say this prayer, to pray this prayer, either for seven minutes or until 21 minutes. Uh, what I do, and that's the alternative, this is easier for me, is just to say either seven or 21 times each of the uh, parts of this prayer. So part which is devoted to you, part which is devoted to this uh, person and the part which is devoted to collective. Uh, I am simply repeating seven times uh, every part of this prayer. So uh, let me share the prayer with you. Um, I learned it from Daniel Laporte. Uh, I have it somewhere here. Just a moment. Yes, there. It goes like this. May I be happy. May I be healthy. May I be free of suffering. May I be free of mental anxiety. May I live in peace. May my life be blessed with ease. So this is the first part and you are supposed to um, repeat this seven times or say it for seven minutes. And then the part which, uh, which is focused on the other person, it's uh, very similar. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you be free of suffering. May you be free of mental anxiety. May you live in peace. May your life be blessed with ease. And the one which is for uh, collective, may we be happy. 
may we be healthy. May we be free of suffering. May we be free of mental anxiety. May we live in peace. May we live, uh, sorry, may our lives be blessed with ease. And that's it. This prayer has um, the ability to rise your vibration uh, because um, it contains a lot of uh, appreciation, a lot of love feeling and a lot of gratitude. So immediately, when, once you find yourself in the, in the gratitude feeling, it is impossible to, at the same time, to experience something else like anger. When you feel the gratitude, the gratitude is there and the gratitude sort of floods you uh, in. And that alone is increasing immediately uh, your uh, your vibration. It is important. I mean, this process is important because whatever you do after your meditation or prayer, after the spiritual practice, is happening from this higher vibration, this higher state of mind, which means that the effect of your work, the effects of your actions will be also manifested from the higher vibration. And that's very different from the ones which are um, created from your ego, um, ego state of being. Well, um, I think that uh, this is it for for today. Let me know how was it for you and uh, whether this little story and this little practical tips make your life uh, easier with meditation because I know that for me it wasn't really easy but I think I arrived to the place where it is easy, it's fun and I feel excited about that and it takes me 15 minutes, sometimes more uh, but there is always a value. So this is my way of um, growing, actually. Uh, this is the foundation. For me, this kind of uh, practice is the foundation that builds my focus of a day, uh, my creativity, my connection with uh, my family and also my clients. And um, the way I operate on that particular day uh, is very, very different um, than um, when I don't do. And I still have days when I don't meditate. Um, they, are, they are different days, I would say. So, guys, I'm sending you lots of love. Uh, it's an absolutely beautiful Saturday uh, afternoon already early afternoon so enjoy your weekend and uh, i will see you early next week for more tips and more stories on how to crack your six-figure coaching business code bye now <laughs>